Beloved, he says, I wish above all things, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Beloved, I wish, this is, this is John writing by the Holy Spirit to this group of people, I wish above everything else, I don't wish above everything else that you prophesy, I don't wish above everything else that, that you're anointed, I don't wish above everything else that you're flowing in power or any of those kinds of things, I wish above everything else that you prosper and be in health. And prosperity, I'm not talking about money, although it can include that. We're talking about being successful and, 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 and uh, um, being prosperous in every area of your life. Succeeding. Everything that you put your hand to prospers. That includes the gifts of the Spirit. That includes all of these things. That includes ministry. But he said, I want you to do that even as your soul prospers. And so I want to submit to you tonight that as great and as much as we desire the gifts of the Spirit, and that's scriptural, and I'm going to talk about that, that that cannot be elevated above the prosperity and the success of our soul. Because the fact of the matter is, the Corinthian church, out of all the letters that was written, that we have, that we read in the New Testament, the Corinthian church were the most Pentecostal were the most wild, were the most crazy, had more of the gifts of the Spirit flowing than any other church that we have record of. And so we've got this wonderful chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, that deal with how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. And we're like, man, the Corinthian church, they had it going on. Here they are, they're flowing, and this is amazing, and this is the church I want to be from or be a part of. And yet Paul starts that letter out in chapter 3, says, I cannot even talk to you as spiritual. You are carnal. So can I also say this? You flowing in the gifts of the Spirit is not a sign of maturity in your life. It's not a sign of your position in the church. Here you have a whole group of people that are flowing in the gifts all the time, and yet Paul says, I can't talk to you as spiritual. In other words, some of the other churches he could have deeper conversations with than this church. And so if John was to say, I want, I, I want you, to, uh, um, uh, your, you, you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, I want to show you a couple of things. Daniel, I, I just kind of heard this in my spirit. Daniel mentioned that they're going to have an impartation time uh, on Saturday. And somebody say, well, what's that about? You know, I don't need, you know, I have the Holy Spirit. I have everything that I need. Can I show you that impartation is absolutely scriptural? Turn with me over to, let's start in 1 Timothy. So what I want to talk about for about the next 10 to 15 minutes real quick is I want to show you how Paul, an apostle who was there to equip the church and to help the church, that he also had the responsibility to raise uh, 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 young men up into ministry and help them find out what it meant to minister and to minister in a way that benefited and equipped the church of God. And, and remember this, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm going through this, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, the first thing that we pursue, the first thing, can anybody tell me what's the very first thing that we pursue? Love. Love. Okay. Y'all been here. We've been... We've been so love for other people is the most important thing. Before we ever look at the for gifts for ourselves, before we ever look at what my calling and what my anointing is, it's love because love, love is the, is the current, love is the river through which the gifts of the Spirit operate. And so if, you, if you're not pursuing love, then the gifts won't flow the way that they're supposed to. So he says there, he says, pursue love and then desire spiritual gifts. So we pursue love first and we desire and then we, we, we cultivate a desire to flow in the gifts of the Spirit so that we can facilitate the love. Right? 
All right. So he's talking about that. And so what he's doing now, he gets to also help young ministers step into a place that they're operating in this. So in 1 Timothy chapter 1, so we're going to take a little journey. I want to look at some things that he told Timothy and some things he told Titus. I love 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus as a minister of the gospel because I, when I read it, I read it as if Paul's talking to me. Hey, this is what you need to be teaching. This is how you need to be living. This is what you need to be doing in ministry. This is what's going to create successful ministry. So I just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be Timothy for a moment, you know, and learn from the apostle, all right? So in 1 Timothy um, chapter 1, I'm just going to uh, uh, go through a couple of things here in verse 3. He says, uh, Timothy, I, 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 I asked you to <clears throat> abide or remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So doctrine was very important to Paul, nor give heed to fables, any of its genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now, the purpose or the end of the commandment is love from a pure heart. So again, he's reemphasizing that the very first thing that, that we operate from a place of love. Love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, from a good conscience, you need to be, how do you, how do you know or how, how do you stay in a place um, where you have a good conscience? I don't have time to go through it. Listen to my last series. Um, uh, you'll love it. Squeaky clean. Soaked in righteousness. Put a little picture of a little baby in a bubble bath. Squeaky clean. Soaked in righteousness. Our conscience has been uh, purified has been cleansed because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you don't believe that and if you don't know that, then you might operate from a place where your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions and the things, those things that make up that distinctive person of who you are might be damaged, might be hurt, might be in a place that you're not able to minister effectively because you're still dealing with your own wounds and your own unhealthiness. He says, so the end of the commandment, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience and from sincere faith, which some having strayed aside have turned aside. Okay, so we're, I'm not going to go through all of that. Let's go to chapter six uh, very quickly. As you turn to chapter six, um, I do, uh, I, I do want to read verse 18 of chapter 1. This charge I commit you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you might wage a good warfare. And so here he's recognizing, I, I want to show you what happened to Timothy's life, that there were some prophecies that came forth concerning his calling and concerning God's purpose in his life. And so he's saying, I need you to hold on to those things because recognize that they're from God, but while you may not be seeing the fulfillment of those things yet, don't give up. Don't give up. Having faith and a good conscience and all of that. So we're going to go to some other things, but 1 Timothy chapter 6, I want to show you something else that he talked to him about. And he says, um, it's taken my phone a moment to find 1 Timothy chapter 6. I thought phones were supposed to be faster than flipping. He says in verse 11, O man of God, flee these things. You can, talk, you can read those other, earlier. But he says, follow after righteousness, godliness. In, 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 in other words, pursue Pursue after these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. For you to be an effective minister, for you to be an effective uh, in the giftings that God gives you, you need to pursue these things. These, these need to be the things that you're going after in your life. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to the which you are also called. And you've confessed the good confession in the presence of of many witnesses. 
Turn with me over to, uh, uh, let's keep on going to the next book, chapter 2, 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, and then chapter 1, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 1. So I was reading that a little bit, but I want you to see what he said in verse, let's start in verse 13, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look at this. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Oh, this is getting good. I want to say that your knowledge and your growth is going to happen as you study the Word of God, as you step out and allow Christ to be on display in your life, and as the fruit of the Spirit. See, here's the thing. Gifts and callings don't... All right, let's see, how do I say it? Gifts and callings are not a sign of your character. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that have stepped into ministry because of giftings and of callings, but never had the character to go with it. And what Paul is doing, if you'll read 1st, 2nd Timothy and Titus, what Paul is doing is he's telling these young men that he's saying, listen, let your life be uh, uh, put Christ on display. Not just your words, not just your giftings, not just the anointing. It's great that you can step into and allow the gift of God to flow through you. But can I tell you that, uh, uh, that you'll receive way more credibility as your life has putting Christ on display. Right. I know a lot of pastors that have elevated pe people in their church because they have an amazing gift. They put them on the worship team because they have an amazing gift, yet, yet the worship team leader outside of standing on the stage is continuing to live a life where they're sleeping around and while they're doing it. And so their life actually doesn't glorify God. The only time that they worship and glorify God is when they're standing here. But because they're so talented, because they're so gifted, and because it might draw people, then sometimes, you know, uh, am I telling the truth here, Daniel? I mean, pastors will do that. Ministers will do that to elevate people you know, and, and, and without any um, consideration of what's their life, life like? Where's the character? Is Jesus being put on display? Oh, I told you, Wednesday nights, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so, you know, it's time to grow up. And we're talking about, because if, if we want to be effective as a church, if you want to be effective, you need to, your, your worship isn't what happens here on a Sunday and a Wednesday night. Your worship is what's happening on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. That's your worship. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says that, uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, your life, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Let's see. And so here he's talking about these things. He's saying, uh, um, uh, he said, let's see. Hold fast the pattern of sound words, which you've heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This is powerful. The things that have been committed, the words that have been committed, what you've learned, you keep by the Holy Spirit. All right, let's go on down here. Um, where is it that he talks about stirring up? Oh, you know what? Go back, go back, go back. In verse 6, this is so awesome too. You know, verse 7, everybody knows. God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But of what? Power. And of what? Love. And of what? Power. And so we use that in the context of when I have fear, God's not giving me the spirit of fear, right? You know, and, and in the dark, God's not giving me the spirit of fear. When we hear a bad report, God's not giving me the spirit of fear, but of love. And it's a great thing, but I want you to look at the verses around it for just a moment. Look at verse six. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God. Remember, we talked about impartation which is in you through the laying on of my hands. 
there was a gift, a call, something that uh, um, was awakened, if you will, in Timothy that happened because Paul and, and other elders got together, laid hands on him, called it out of him. And so he's saying, I'm telling you, you need to stir it up. This was something done by the Holy Spirit, which means, guys, the gifts of the Spirit that God's given to you, you need to stir it up. How do you stir it up? I believe that the way you stir it up is, is you just start praying in the Holy Ghost. You start praying in the Spirit. You know, the Bible says in Jude, uh, um, it says, you, you, you build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you don't feel like that God's with you, when you don't feel like you're anointed, when you don't feel like you've got a word, when you don't feel like, that's a great time just to say, you know, start praying in the Holy Ghost. And just, I'm telling you, rivers begin to flow. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And everything that's, everything that's, that's, that's in those rivers, man, the love of God starts flowing and you start stirring those things up. See, too many times we're waiting on, on God to come and do something. God hit me. I'm ready to be used. And what he's saying is, it's already there. Stir it up. Look at this. Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So there's a, there, there's a, there, there's a scriptural precedent there for impartation. That's what Daniel's talking about. For, now see that word for connects to the previous verse. Okay, so apparently young Timothy had a little bit of an issue with standing up and using the gift and being and, and stepping into the gift and the calling that God had given him. Many times here on Wednesday nights, people are waiting, they're praying, God, I believe I have something. Please have Pastor Mark call on me. I call, and I'm sitting there, if you got something, come on up. And, and you're there saying, if, I have, if, if, if you want me to come up, God have him call on me. And so I do. But ultimately, we, what he wants you to do is this right here. Stir up the gift. And he says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. And I just want, and I have to be honest with you, that word fear isn't the way that it's, we normally, uh, it's not the normal Greek word for fear. It's not about this, over, this overwhelming fear that people deal with. It actually is the Greek word for being timid. God has not given you the spirit of timidity, of, of backing off. Okay? In other words, this is talking about you stirring up the gift. You know how sometimes you, you feel like God's given you a word in Walmart and you're like, I just, I just can't do that. I'm not going to go through my testimony. Everybody has a Walmart experience. I had to pass that twist test two times. I'm just glad I passed it. Thank you, Jesus. But, you know, you, you just, I can't go up and talk to that person. I can't talk to the person on the airplane next to me. You know, that kind of thing. This, is, that, this scripture is for you. In the elevator, whatever. God has not given you the spirit of being timid. The spirit of not stepping out. But he's given you the spirit of power. And of love, and look at this, and of a sound mind, which basically means that when you step into it, you're going to have all the words and all the wisdom and everything that you need to say in that moment. You don't have to have your whole act together before you start talking. Just engage in conversation and watch the Spirit of God flow through you. Isn't this awesome? So it says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Okay? Um, just a couple of other things that I want you to see. In, verse, in chapter 2, verse 1, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong, not in the gifts of the Spirit. He says, Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Why? Because all of that flows from the love of God and the gifts of the Spirit. Do you know what the Greek word for gifts are, for the gifts of the Spirit? How many of you have ever heard of Charisma Magazine? 
Anybody? Anybody subscribe to Charisma magazine? You know, I mean, that's been around forever. It's a spirit-filled magazine. And so charisma always meant to me, it has to do with the Holy Ghost. Charismatic churches. That means we're Holy Ghost filled. You know what the word charisma actually means? It's a gift that comes from grace. Isn't that amazing? The gifts of the Spirit come out of the grace of God. So if I want to flow in the gifts of the Spirit the way God wants me to, I need to be strong in the grace of God. Strong in it. That's maturity. In other words, I'm still not, I'm not seeking, I'm not seeking, I'm not seeking the gifts. I'm not seeking um, uh, 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 the approval of others. I'm not seeking the recognition, but I want to be strong in the grace of God and what that means so that the gifts will flow unhindered. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, now he says, commit these to faithful men. So faithfulness is something that we want to happen in our lives. I'm talking about maturity, okay? Finally, finally, very quickly, turn with me over to Titus, last scripture. And then we'll let it flow. You'll also find later on in, in these things, Paul again tells him to pursue certain things. But in Titus... Um, I think it's, it's chapter 2. Look at this. In verse 6, again, a young minister that's to go in and to help strengthen churches, help establish churches. He says, likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things. Look at this. In all, somebody say all. all. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In other words, my life, thank you, Father, my life, says more than my gift. Does that make sense? my life, to people that I know, to people that I'm around, my life, I want to be a pattern. I want, if I want people to follow me, I don't want them to follow me because I'm a pastor. I don't want them to follow me because I'm super anointed. I don't want them to follow me because I have gifts of healing. That's not what I want to be the draw to me. I want my life, see, Paul said in another place, Follow me, imitate me as, as I follow Christ. I want my life to be a pattern of good works to people, and that's what I want them to see. Grace being expressed through my life. And so he says, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned. So I need to, I, I need to work on my language that one who is an opponent may be ashamed. Exhort, exhort bond servants, and I want you to see this here. Exhort bond servants, people that, you know, in, in, in today's society, we say employees and employers, to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things. Again, this is talking about your character. This is talking about your soul. This is talking about uh, 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 what's being expressed through your life. Let that uh, be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing, look at this, all good fidelity that you may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. In other words, you're putting clothes on the doctrine that you proclaim through your life. Here's, here's where I'm going to close. As, as we continue to move in the gifts of the Spirit, listen to me, as you, as you have a desire for the gifts, as you love others, don't let that be to the exclusion of, of the grace of God and the love of God and, and freedom being expressed in your life in a way uh, um, you know, that you don't think about that. You don't think that that matters, that the anointing is the most important thing, that the gifts are the most important thing. No, if there's anything that you pursue, you pursue 
a life that is a pattern of good works. And what happens as you're strong in the grace of God, it, the gifts of the Spirit, get this, will explode in your life. You will hear God more. You will walk in His favor more. You will walk in the anointing more. I'm telling you, five years ago, God started us on a journey in 2011 into the grace of God, into learning about the grace. Three years later, then it, it, he, it, he took us to the next place to step into the gifts of the Spirit. But because we had a foundation of the love of Christ and the grace of God, then we didn't miss it when it came to the gifts of the Spirit. And the church has grown and has become healthy as a result of having the right foundation. And, we have, and, and so people don't find themselves isolated, falling off, and that sort of thing. No, 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 no. It just, we, we, come, we go from glory to glory to glory. So I can testify to the truth of what I'm saying tonight. So if you want to move to a place of maturity, let this be your aim. Let this be your goal.